Hey, I'm Sweeney Chan, and I just built this massive SSTO in Kerbal Space Program 2 as part of my ongoing effort to beat the game using aircraft only. We're going to try to use this SSTO to send a mission to Jewel and maybe even dive into the depths of its atmosphere, all in the name of science. And speaking of science, we're going to try to knock out three missions today. A lens test in the upper atmosphere of Jewel, a better signal mission, which is basically just putting a relay around Jewel, and Crater Conundrum, which is going to be a mission to Gilly. Both the Jewel missions are going to be taken care of by this probe right here, which took no time at all to build. It's going to be powered by Xenon. And we move right on to building the SSTO that's going to house everything. We'll build the Gilly probe a little bit later on. As you could probably tell, this is just a massive grab for as much science as I can possibly get in one launch, because these do take quite a bit of time to get into orbit, the little SSTO missions, and uh, this SSTO is going to be no exception to that. We're going to call this one the SO3 Titan, and I'm building it specifically with building things in orbit in mind, because we're going to need to do that later on. Unfortunately, the first versions of it did melt on the launch pad, and that's a direct result of putting the landing gear on the wings. If you're building something like this, I'd recommend you put the landing gear on the fuselage like this, and then just uh, dragging it out to wherever it needs to be. That puts all the weight in the middle of the fuselage and uh, KSP2 radial joints really aren't that strong right now. But as you can see, this gets into orbit and it's here that I realize I can actually complete another mission. I just need to put a docking port on the SSTO somewhere and it has the right fuel tank to complete this mission, which is only 35 sides, but uh, the more missions you complete, the more missions you unlock. But we're going to load this up for its full launch and this is our attempted ghillie probe here. It's just going to be a very, very simple little probe using a big fat tug. So here's our SSTO in its full glory and fully loaded. And although everything started out as expected, we eventually needed to use the back rocket engine there to get our ramjets to actually activate. The uh, turbo ramjets that we're using, the whiplash engines, need to get to around 400 meters per second before they start getting way, way more thrust and getting you up to like hypersonic speeds. But luckily we did get into orbit when we got our mission. And here's what it looks like in orbit, a thing of beauty. And it's time to release our two separate missions to two separate planets. At least that's the idea. So we released first our Jewel mission, which is going to immediately unfold its uh, solar arrays. And while that one was flying away, I figured I would go ahead and release our Gilly mission. But it didn't come out. It just kind of stayed there, pinched between the wings that I accidentally clipped into the cargo bay. Then the SSTO started doing this. And making this horrible noise. Uh... Yeah, that was a bit of a problem. So we decided not to release that mission, and this is going to be a sole mission to Jewel, which in retrospect would have probably been the smartest thing to begin with. Because as you'll see here in a moment, uh, ion engines in KSP2 at least behave very similarly to how they do in real life, at least on my probe here. Uh, we had to do many, 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 many passes to raise our orbit until finally we got an encounter with the Mun, which saved us a few more passes, luckily, uh, gave us a little gravity kick out of the Kerbin system. And we're just going to do our jewel burn out in Kerbal orbit because it's going to take so long. Uh, we would probably crash into Kerbin or something similar if we tried to do it in low Kerbin orbit. And you may have noticed there we got one of those weird terrain glitches that just appear when you're entering and exiting uh, SOIs. I have no idea what causes that, but it's a... Uh, it's interesting, at least. And uh, this mission really made me thankful for KSP2's uh, time warp burning system because uh, that jewel burn took like two hours, and at 4x warp in the original game, that still would have been a hefty chunk of time I had to sit there waiting for the burn to complete. But we transfer over to Jewel, you know, fast forward a, like, three years, I believe, <laughs> to the Jewel encounter, and we get a nice high Jewel orbit, which is very important for saving Delta V. You go out to the apoapsis of your orbit, and it takes far less Delta V to adjust uh, yourself around Jewel, because uh, Jewel is a big gravity well, and it'll cost you a lot of Delta V if you're not careful. But we're going to head back to our SSTO, which is still hanging around in LKO, and we're going to bring it back home really quick before we continue our Jewel mission. We bring in those uh, solar panels and stuff on the front, and we relight our engines, trying to get a uh, perfect landing at the KSC. Hopefully, that's the idea at least. We go into our first person view here, as close as we can get really, which is just the chase cam. And I notice that I'm a little bit north, well a lot bit north of the KSC, so we're going to angle it here toward the uh, right, and hopefully that's going to kind of push us south down toward the KSC. And as you can see, it's it's working quite good, but if you notice our trajectory there is coming up a little bit short of the KSC. And then this happens to make things worse. Something to do with the front canards there, and possibly the vertical stabilizers on them, is causing us to go into this really severe spin stall, um, and it's not looking too good. It's uh, looking really, really bad, actually. And uh, as we get lower into the atmosphere, instead of fixing itself, it starts getting slightly worse, and uh, we go into this death spiral toward the ocean. 
And uh, I was working as hard as I could to try to recover this thing. I even activated the uh, uh, roll axis on our back uh, elevators there. Um, and that didn't really seem to help too much until we got into really thick atmosphere towards sea level and uh, we were finally able to pull this out of the spin. But we were out of fuel and nowhere near the KSC. So I reverted the flight back to a save that I made in the upper atmosphere before all of this spinning and stuff happened. And I boosted our orbit way past the KSC in hopes that we could uh, fly it down using all of that drag that we experienced the last time. And this was going much, much better. We managed to do the little trick again and pull our orbit down south to the KSC. But around here, at the exact same point, around 20,000 meters up in the air, we go into a similar spin as before. And at this point, I was honestly pretty hopeless, but then I tried using the rudder a little bit more and was able to pull this out of the spin pretty effectively. And we uh, immediately come down to a bit of a lower elevation where I can hopefully spot the KSC as we come up on it. And we end up having a lot more fuel to spare this time. And that's probably thanks to the not spinning completely out of control and the little boost that we gave with the rocket engines. As we come out of the clouds though, the KSC comes into view. And I'm getting ready for one of my craziest landings yet. This is essentially as big as the last SSTO that we landed. The one that we landed in the woods that is. Um, but we're actually coming up on the runways. I'm trying to keep this as intact as possible, and this is our first approach on the runways. We're coming in on runway two here, uh, darn near on the center line, and I'm gonna bring this down to as near to real, real speed as I possibly can get it without it being a massive lag. And I'm gonna bring up the G-force meter and the nav ball here, so you can see my inputs on the nav ball and how hard the landing is on the G-force meter. And we did initially bounce a little bit when we came in for the landing. I don't know if you can see it here on the G-Force meter, but we do come down for one of the softest landings I believe I've ever had. That was, from my perspective, absolute butter. I didn't even know we'd bounced on my end because of all the lag, but we came down and we accidentally proved that this can actually bring things back from orbit because remember that Gilly mission? It's still in here. We weren't able to get rid of it, so we brought it back down to the runway with us. So this might be very useful for recovering some of the missions that are now debris. But back to our Jewel mission, uh, we're still orbiting around Jewel, and we're going to try to get a quick encounter with Lathe just for a little bit extra sides on the way. And approaches with Lathe are always so beautiful, and especially beautiful in KSP2. If you were to compare this to the original game with absolutely no graphics mods, it would be no comparison whatsoever. This is absolutely stunning to come up on. It gives you a fair bit of science. I really can't wait to come back here for a more serious mission, and you know we have to do a Lathe SSTO. But we quickly get all of our science transmitted back to Kerbin from that, and we're off to try to get a LJO, I guess you could call it, a low jewel orbit. And when I say low, I mean really, really low. We're just barely skimming along the top of the atmosphere here. And all that's left to do after this is to actually delve down into the atmosphere. Because you see, for the lens test, we have to get a atmospheric report from Jules' upper atmosphere. Which I would have done with a manned plane, but uh, I feel like that would have been the heftiest insurance paperwork yet for the Smoonie Aerospace Corporation, uh, because there's no way home once you get here. And you may have noticed, we're getting the highest mission rewards yet. This is some insane science from Jules' atmosphere here, and even more insane samples. We might need to actually do a manned mission here anyway, delve down into the atmosphere, and then head back out. But that is not the fate of this probe. This probe is going to go down into the atmosphere, and hopefully, if we can slow down enough, maybe bump into the surface, get crushed on the surface, or melt on the surface. I don't see any option ending well for this probe, but as it slowed down more and more to in some insanely slow speeds, I had more and more hope that we might actually land on the surface or something. Um, we got down to under 100 meters per second, and I guess you could kind of consider this an aircraft since those giant solar arrays kind of acted like uh, wings almost, or more like a parachute, but at around this point, around 12,000 meters above Jules' surface, uh, we just kind of melted apart. Which is apparently your fate now if you try to delve down into Jewel. Uh, you just kind of melt apart right at cloud level. But our little Ion engine managed to fly down into the clouds a little bit. And I consider that a success. So we're going to head back here to the KSC where it's just a normal day. And cash in our 5,000 science reward for the relay mission and 3,000 for that. Grand total of 11,000 science all together for this mission. So I immediately picked up the airliner's node which is, gives us some massive landing gear and even bigger engines. 
and then picked up way too many notes to even list out. But we now have uh, RTGs and a ton of other stuff. And we have a bunch of new missions. One to Tylo, one to Pole, and one to Lathe. I don't know about you, but it looks like a Jewel 5 might be in order. But let me know if I should do that in the next episode, because as for right now, that's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much for watching and checking out this series. If you really like it, make sure to subscribe to my channel, because I'll be continuing this as long as I need to, to complete the game. And of course, I'll be posting some other cool KSP content as well. On the right hand side of your screen is either the last or the next episode, depending on when you're watching this. And on the left hand side of your screen are some really cool screenshots sent in by viewers just like you in my Discord. Thanks again for watching. This is Smoony Chad, out.